Six Nations done, and we have some stats from the final round to have a look at. So let's start with possession, as always. Top of the three this week is Wales with 54, Ireland next with 53, Scotland 53 as well, England and Italy 47 each, and France down there are 46. So France again proving that they can win without having the majority of the ball. They're just so good with their strike runners and that kind of turnover ball as well. In terms of territory then, Scotland top there with 53, Wales and Ireland with 51 each, France and England with 49 each, and Italy with 47. So Italy, you know, um, for a lot of the Six Nations, they've been on the losing side in the territory battle. Last week they had more territory against Wales, couldn't do much with it. This time against Scotland, you know, they pushed them close, but still you'd like to see them getting a bit more territory in terms of, like in the first half, just as an example, they only had 37% territory. When they start coming back in the second half, that's switched to 57%. So they can you know, dominate territory when they want to. And that's what we talked about all tournament is getting into the right positions to be able to use their undoubted ability with the ball in hand. Next then, on to Rooks. So most rooks won by Scotland, 110. Next, Ireland, 102. Then we have Italy, 95. Wales, 89. England, 82. And France at the bottom there was 76. In terms of percentage then, Ireland at the top there with 98. They've been, you know, top or top two or three all through the tournament, normally top two. Uh, France next with 97. Italy with 96. Wales also 96. Scotland, 94, and England down at 86. So 86 is a big drop-off compared to, like, normally last place would be kind of in the low 90s. So, you know, England, although they did attack the Irish rooks there in the first half and made things a bit of a mess for them, overall in the game it was actually England who came out the loser in terms of the battle of the rook there. In terms of malls then, Ireland won the most balls with seven, Italy six, England five, Wales four, Scotland three, and France two. And then percentage wise, something we haven't seen all tournament. You know, Ireland, Italy, Wales, Scotland, France all on 100%, England then with 71. So just having a quick look back at the previous rounds, the most you've ever had in the first round with 100% was four teams. On 100%, but that included Scotland winning one mall from one. Um, so, in terms of you know teams going to the mall multiple times, and five teams have been able to come out with 100% really shows how much I think each of the teams have improved in that area through the tournament. Especially Italy, who you know we know they struggle against England, and England seem to be the ones really that were have been going backwards the last two. Um, two rounds previous to that, you know, they were up there uh, near the top in terms of their their malls, uh, but they've had like the a few rounds now where they haven't been at their best in the mall. Maybe people, you know, saw what they did against Italy and and maybe paid a bit more attention to how to stop that and were more successful because of it. Next time we have set piece scrums, so most scrums won by. England with nine. Next, we have Scotland, seven. France and Wales, five. Ireland, four. And Italy with three. And percentage-wise, then, France with 100%. Their scum has kind of been up and down. Like, they were only 44% um, the previous round. And, you know, to go to 100% now, and then they, they had, like, I think they were at 90% for the first three rounds. So, Maybe last week was just kind of a you know a blip for them against England, but this week back to form really. Next to me up Scotland with eighty seven, England eighty one, Ireland eighty. So England obviously on top on the scrum early on, but Ireland even out by the end of the game. Wales is seventy one and Italy down there with sixty. 
And whales with their scrum, like whales have been, you know, kind of around that 60%, 60 to 70% for most of the term. So that's definitely somewhere that um, they need to to work on. It seems to be proven a little bit, but they still uh, have a bit to do and they don't have that many games left to do it in either. Next, then we have line outs. So Wales won the most line outs with 14, Ireland and Italy with 12, France and England with nine each, Scotland with six. And then we look at the percentages. Wales, they're at 93%. Obviously, in terms of set piece, line out has improved a lot more than, than the scrum through the tournament because for the first three rounds, they're actually the, the worst ranked line out. Um, by a margin as well but in the last two rounds they've been top two so they really have improved there next we have france with 90 percent ireland 85 england 81 italy 80 and scotland 66 and scotland really going in the opposite direction to wales where they were like just a tad behind italy for the best line out in the first three rounds combined and in the last two rounds, they've actually been the worst line out. So, you know, something not quite going right there for them in that respect. Next, then we have clean breaks. So, Ireland topping there with 10. Next, France with six, Scotland five, Wales four, Italy three, and England one. So, England's attack, very blunt against Ireland. There was a lot of, you know, a lot made about. Manu Tulagi coming back in and he's going to give them go forward and punch holes in the Irish team. He did have that one run early on where he bumped uh, Aki out of the way. But other than that, like England not really finding much penetration. And when you think that, like they had, you know, that back line, obviously Stewart getting sent off. But in the first half, you have Stewart there, you have Watson and Arundale, all dangerous runners. But just not being able to, to make breaks. And I think maybe the one clean break they, they probably had was possibly Arundel, who then got isolated and turned over. On you know, in contrast, Ireland, they were poor at the kind of first twenty minutes or so where balls weren't going to hand, but once they got the game going, they found those gaps and they made those breaks and that led to to the tries that ultimately delivered the Grand Slam for them. France, you always expect, you know, um, when they have the chance that they're, they're going to make those breaks and they're always kind of up there near the top, you know, top two or three uh, pretty much every round. Next, then we have defenders beaten. So Scotland beat the most defenders. We've seen actually in the last couple of rounds against Ireland and Italy where they've been putting the ball through the hands a lot more and I think with Kinghorn in there at 10 you know he he maybe doesn't have the kicking game that Russell has he obviously doesn't have the skills that Russell has either but he brings different skills to the table as well and one of those is a similar ability to Russell to be able to put players through holes and he also threatens a line. I think you saw, like, guy scored a hat-trick. Uh, he, you know, he, he maybe threatens the line a bit more than maybe Russell does, although Russell likes to run himself as well. Ireland next with 34 then. So, you know, despite the malfunctions early on, still getting the, their, you know, running game going. And it's one of the features, I think, of this Ireland team that they, they can stretch your defence and then they put players through holes. We saw it for, you know, the, the, the Sheehan try there where they, they were able to basically convince England that, that they were going wide and Sheehan shouldn't be, shouldn't be something to worry about. But then Van der Fleer passes the ball back into him when he goes through and it's, you know, moments like that where they're so good at, at just picking those holes in the, in the defence. And, and that's why they're so far up there, I think. Next then we have France and Wales with 20 each. England with 15 and Italy down with 9, which is really strange. Like Italy, over the tournament to, to date, like, um, or before this round, I should say, Italy and France were the two teams who would always be up there with most defenders beaten. 
um, like Italy in the last round, they they had thirty eight defenders beaten, and before that, then they had eighty three across the first three rounds. So you know a big drop off for them there. They obviously um, against Scotland though, who were actually the, you know were the best defense in the Six Nations up until at least um, last round. When we look at the, the overall stats, we'll see whether that's still true. Um, and that's, that'll be coming out tomorrow as well. Um, next, then we have the broken tackle. So Duhan van der Merwe returned to form for him. You know, eight defenders beaten. Um, next is Anthony, no- Anthony Watson with seven. Jack Dem- Dempsey, six. And Nick Tompkins, six as well. So that change in the centres for Wales, you know, at least in terms of broken tackles, had an impact for them. But I thought that the, um, you know, the, the two young centres they had the previous week were actually looking like a, an exciting combination as well. Um, on to offloads then, Wales are the most offloads with 16. Um, next week, Scotland 14, Italy 6, France 6, England 4, and Ireland 3. So Wales, again, like they're, they're offloading, but it's not necessarily leading to... Um, to line breaks you can see that they only made four line breaks you know so for even if every offload even every break came from an offload it's still only a one and four return from it um in terms of players and offloading nick Tompkins is there at the top again with six pierre bruno with three falatau three and the mac two richie and, and ben white as well two each there turnovers conceded then you have ireland at the top there with 19 which is you know not something that we weren't normally would associate with them um they were like at the bottom there themselves and wales were the two kind of stingiest in terms of conceding turnovers even though ireland run the ball a lot more than than wales do um their, their numbers are still pretty similar but against england you know they had those multiple functions especially early on in that first half where um, you had like players just passing behind, you know, the, the, the runners and stuff like that, and uh, passes just not going to, to hand properly. Um, but then they, they did tighten up in the second half. Next time we have Italy with 16, Wales 13, France 12, England 11, and Scotland uh, being stingy there with eight. In terms of players, then the top two, George North. And James Lowe with four each. Then we have Pierre Bruno, Ben White, and Damien Pinot with two each. Kicks from hands. Ireland top there with 34. England next with 33. So a lot of kicking in that game. We saw a lot of kicking duels. England getting kind of the better of it in the first half and then Ireland in the second half, explaining the fact that they were missing a player at the back, you know, really helped helped them out i think in terms of just being able to put the ball into space and put england under a lot of pressure france and wales with 26 each italy with 19 and scotland 18 which is very strange for scotland the last couple of rounds they've been bottom of the kicking stats whereas prior to that themselves and england were the two teams who were kicking the most in terms of meters from kick then Kicks then, we have Owen Farrell there with 501, Entomac 450, Van Porfrey 378, Lowe with 344, Ramos 335, and Garbisi with 314. So not a single Scott in there. Normally we would expect, you know, if Russell was around, that he would be at the top and maybe some like Hogg would be somewhere in the top six or seven as well. Next time we have meters run, Scotland top that with 566 again kind of uncharacteristic for them normally they're down towards um kind of you know middle of the pack really um with meters run next we have ireland with 471 normally they're somewhere close to the top france with 454 italy 398 which is kind of again a bit low for them uh, Wales with 371 and england right at the bottom there with 282 so england not really you know, making 
much progress. We talked about how they they picked really a back line to, you know, in the centers to punch holes, but then they're back three really to try and make meters with ball in hand. And it just weren't able to do that. Ireland, I think, marshaled them very well. In terms of players, then we have Blair Kinghorn with 114 and Ollie Smith there as well. So, and then like Duhan van der Merwe 110. So Scotland really dominating the, the top of the list there. Then was that Rhys with 102, Rio Dyer 98, and Dami Plow with 97. So decent showing for Wales there as well. We're seeing them putting the ball through the hands a little bit more than they've done, you know, kind of in the last couple of rounds. They, they've started to um, move the ball a bit more than we, we've seen them in the first kind of three rounds. Next then, on to uh, carry. So in terms of runs, Scotland with the most 153. Again, you know, atypical for them over the tournament. Italy next at 129. That's kind of what to expect from them. We know they, they love to run it from anywhere. Wales and Ireland with 128, just again showing that, you know, Wales really are putting the ball through the hand more, hands more. France at 107 and England at the bottom there with 104. In terms of metres per run then, France at the top there were 4.24. I think when we come to look at the tournament as a whole, France are probably going to be at the top as well. Scotland next with 3.7. Ireland very close with 3.68. Italy with 3.09. Then Wales with 2.9. And England down there with 2.71. So England not really making much in terms of their carries. They, you know, they, they picked a a team again, I think, to, to try and actually make those meters, but it just didn't work out for them. And, and, you know, and that includes that first half where they did have 15 on the pitch. In terms of individuals then, Salupe Falatao leads the way with 17. You know, um, he's, he's won his 100 cap as well at the weekend. What a player he's been for for Wales and also the, the Lions when he's played for them too. And he's just, just a joy to watch that guy as well. Bundyaki next to 15, I felt that he's kind of stepped up for Ireland. Like we saw McCluskey being really good in the first, you know, a uh, few rounds for Ireland. Aki then was kind of had, had to play 13 when, you know, it's not a natural position for him back to his natural 12 or his favorite 12 position against England. I thought that he was one of the players that, that was actually playing well when, um, you know, a few players around him were below par, especially in that first 20 minutes against England. Next, we have uh, Maurice with 13, Jack Dempsey, uh, Alderton, and Schumann with 13 each as well. On to passes then. Italy with the most passes with 210. Next, Scotland 196, Ireland 172, Wales 167, England 129, and France 119. So Italy and France in terms of when when you think about like with ball in hand, you know, two of them are very exciting teams that can make things happen. But France are just able to to make it happen with a lot less passes. And a lot of that, again, is to do with the fact that they tend to put the ball through the hands, either from broken play when there's a great opportunity, you know, there's there's space there available, or they get themselves with a good kicking game into position first, and then they put it through the hands in the opposition half, whereas Italy generally tend to try and pass out from the back. Um, Although, wasn't it France actually tried to run it out one time as well and almost got caught with Ramos in possession there too. Um, next then in terms of individuals, uh, Gibson Park there returning at nine for Ireland. It tops that with 88. Next then we have um, White with 72, DuPont 52, Garbisi 42, Fusco 40, and then Van Portley with 40 as well. On to tackling stats then. So... Italy had to make the most tackles with 195, uh, you know, uh, soaked up a lot of pressure from um, Scotland at times, but then they also uh, kind of returned it. As you can see, to Scotland, they're next with 165. 
Then we have England 147, Ireland one, or sorry, France 141, Ireland 139, and Wales 133. In terms of missed tackles, then um, Italy missed the most with 35, England next with 34. You know, bo- both playing teams who are very good at kind of finding space and causing you to miss tackles. Um, next, then we have Wales and France with 20 each. Ireland with 15 and Scotland with 9. So Scotland, again, being very mean in defence. Ireland, that's a big improvement from them. Generally, we've seen them kind of be either in the mid-table or towards the higher end of the uh, missed tackle stats. In terms of tackling percentage then, Scotland lead the way with 94.8. The defence really is um superb i'm pretty sure again when we come to look at the overall tournament they're going to be the the top defensive team in terms of tackling percentage next is ireland with 90.3 so really did handle that you know england um attack very well next france 87.6 wales 86.9 italy 84.8 and england 81.2 so again you know there is the whole thing of being without a player for half of the game, but still in the first half, England were still missing tackles as well. And once Ireland kind of hit their straps and you know cut out the errors, they they really did did um, make hay at times. Um, still not vintage performance from Ireland, but st- you can still see from the stats once they got going. Um, things started to work for them. In terms of individual tacklers, then we have Jack Dempsey at the top of 23. That's two weeks in a row that he's been at the top there and he's kind of taking over from Matt Fagerson, um, who was at the top for the first couple of rounds. Next is Jack Willis with 22. I thought he was really good for for England and Menace at the breakdown as well. Um, Frederick Garutza next to 20, Fischetti 19, Lamoureux 18, Tipperick 18 and Cross with 18 as well. In terms of dominant tackles, then we have uh, Nicotera and Lowe with three each. That whole Italian front row, um, they, the whole tournament, they've been the, the guys making the, the, the dominant tackles. You can see that as well because we've got Willis and then Fischetti, another member of that front row there for Italy. Tipperick and Ryan as well with two each. Missed tackles, then we have Pierre Bruno with seven. Um, Owen Farrell with six, Nicotero with five, Fusco five, Ribbons four, and Genge four. So you can see a, a lot of um, you know missed tackles by both Italian and English players. And again, I think it's more a factor of the the attacks they were facing because both Ireland and uh, Scotland are very good at kind of working your defense around and making breaks and make, making your players miss those tackles. On to penalties then. Scotland conceded the most penalties was 15. Next, England with 13. You know, let's leave the red card aside for a moment. You know, the, the discipline has been an issue for them um, in terms of the, the last two rounds, I feel. Um, Whereas for the first three rounds, they were actually to give away the least amount of penalties. So, you know, it's it's something that they they will want it to trend in that direction for, you know, too much longer. But I think that given the performance of the first three rounds, they probably can get back to a um a situation where they're conceding less than ten penalties per game. Next then uh, we have Italy ten, Wales eight. Ireland seven and France six. So Ireland, even when they're not playing all that well, we saw it as well against Scotland in the previous week, they tend not to concede that many penalties. But when we look at the individual stats, there is one player who does tend to give away a lot of penalties. So let's have a look at those now. So Andrew Porter there, top with four. He, um, I'm pretty sure when when we look at the overall, he's going to be the most penalised player in the this year's Six Nations. Next is Dempsey with three, Genge, Falato, Toji, and Sinclair with two each. I think there were a few other players as well with two each there too. Okay, so that's the end of the 
round five stats. Um, I will have the stats for the entire tournament, probably up by around sometime tomorrow, probably in the evening time. Also, there's going to be a video on each team just having a look at their performances. Those are going to take a bit longer to to put out. So I'm going to start kind of at the bottom and work my way up. So don't expect the kind of Ireland video until the weekend maybe or, or even into to next week, depending on how long it takes to put each video together. And But there will be more stuff during this week as well. We'll have some... I'm going to put together a team of the tournament. Remember, it's just going to be a bit of fun. So if you disagree with me, that's fine. Uh, we don't need to fall out over it. Um, and also going to have um, build up to the Women's Six Nations, your series returning, etc. So we're going to have lots more content for you coming on the channel.